Okay, this presentation is about energy systems. Okay, foods consumed to produce energy. When you consume food, that food is digested, and then when you digest it, it's absorbed into the blood and transported. And it's transported to your active cells, or it's either used or stored in the muscle. So if we look at carbohydrates, once you have your carbohydrates, this gets transferred to glucose, and then that glucose is either used to create energy and to form ATP, which we're going to find out what that stands for, or it's stored as glycogen in your muscles. Fat is broken down into fatty acids, and again that's either used for energy or it's stored as adipose tissue, which is another word for body fat. Protein is broken down into amino acids, where again it's used for energy, or stored, it's used for storage and the repair of body tissue. So glucose, when it's broken down, is used in three different ways. It's either placed in the body cells, so glucose diffuses, so it moves easily into the cells and is used to meet their energy demands. It's also stored in skeletal muscle, so glucose is stored here as glycogen and is used when the body is working harder. And finally, it's either stored in the liver, uh, so some of the glucose is stored in the, as glycogen in the liver and used to maintain blood sugar levels. Okay, so if um, people suffer from hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, when their blood sugar levels are low, the liver then converts some of this glycogen back to glucose to raise blood sugar levels. So glucose is used in three ways in the muscle. Okay, so let's look at the ATP cycle. So the basic um, energy currency of the body is a ATP, so adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so that's an adenosine, and that's three phosphate bonds. And when you break off one of these phosphate bonds, you create energy. Okay, but what we need to do to keep this cycle going is stick this phosphate bond back on um, to this adenosine diphosphate, which is two phosphate bonds. And we can do that in three different ways, and that's what the energy systems are. So, energy is released in the body by the breakdown of carbohydrates, fats and proteins to produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP consists of a substance called adenosine and three phosphate groups. Special high energy bonds exist between the phosphate groups. Breaking one of the phosphate bonds releases energy. In a muscle cell, the breakdown of ATP results in mechanical work, which is muscle contraction and heat. When ATP loses one of its phosphate bonds, energy is produced and is converted to ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. Once this has occurred, ADP is resynthesized back into ATP by a process called coupled reactions, which is a bit like a shuttle system. So ATP can be resynthesized in three different ways, and these are referred to as the energy systems. The first two energy systems, phosphocreatine and lactic acid, are termed anaerobic because ATP is produced very quickly without oxygen. The third energy system, aerobic, produces ATP slowly with oxygen. So have, let's have a look at this diagram here. So we're within a, a muscle, and this is the ATP system, okay? And we're using creatine, which is found in your muscle, to add to ADP, yeah? To resynthesize or to make up adenosine triphosphate. So we have creatine, which is in our muscle, and that is what's used in the first energy system to create ATP. 
So creatine phosphate is found in our muscles and stored in limited amounts. When added to ADP, it will remake adenosine triphosphate. The ATP PC system is used when an activity lasts between 6 and 10 seconds, such as short sprints in some sports, lifting weights and some gymnastic events such as pole vaulting. After 6 to 10 seconds, creatine phosphate must be regenerated, so other fuels, for example glycogen and fat, must supply energy for the regeneration of ATP. Let's look at the lactic acid system. So here, in the muscle, um, we're now going to use stored glycogen to create or to remake adenosine triphosphate. Now the problem with this is ideally glycogen is used to create energy in the presence of oxygen. So when we do it without oxygen, A, it's only supplied in limited amounts, but B, um, there's a byproduct, okay, and that byproduct is lactic acid, which creates that burning sensation. So the lactic acid system uses glycogen in the absence of oxygen to make ATP. Adenosine diphosphate and glycogen are combined to make more adenosine triphosphate. Without oxygen, glucose can produce a little adenosine triphosphate known as anaerobic glycolysis. But these stores deplete very quickly. During glycolysis, glycogen produces the byproducts called pyruvate and hydrogen ions. These compounds together form lactic acid. If the rate of lactic acid production exceeds or is greater than the rate of removal, muscles become tired and muscle contraction is impeded. So to avoid fatigue, exercise intensity must be reduced so that the lactic acid can be carried away from the muscles by the bloodstream to the liver for conversion back into glucose or used by other cells receiving a sufficient supply of oxygen. So type 2A fibers are well adapted to carrying fast rates of glycolysis, but they cannot toler tolerate high levels of lactate. So suitable activities are, say, hunt 400 meters, and sports that have repeated sprints, for example, football, rugby, or high energy activities. And it lasts up to 90 seconds. So let's see this in action. So we have this sprinter here, these are her muscles. So glucose produces energy and it also leads to lactic acid quickly building up and makes the muscles feel tired and painful. All our effort cannot last for very long. Some of the muscle from the energy is used for muscle contractions to create movement. And the rest is converted into heat to warm the body. So let's look at the aerobic system. So this is the ideal situation for the glycogen because now it's used in the presence of oxygen to create um, energy and to resynthesize the adenosine triphosphate. The byproduct of this is carbon dioxide because you're breathing in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide and also water. So the aerobic production of adenosine triphosphate takes place in the presence of oxygen using a mixture of fatty acids and glucose as fuel, which is very efficient at producing energy. This process occurs within specialized structures in the cell called mitochondria. Okay, remember this is the energy producing site of a cell where oxygen is required. And that contains contain special enzymes needed by the cell to use oxygen. The byproduct of this system is carbon dioxide and water. And now, a key adaptation to regular aerobic training is the body becomes more efficient in mobilizing, transporting, and oxidizing fatty acids. This is because the body develops a greater number of mitochondria and fat oxidizing enzymes. So the body becomes more efficient at burning fat. This is important for endurance activities because glycogen is in much shorter supply than fat. So by using more fatty acids, you can make your glycogen stores last much longer. So here's an athlete with his muscle. And again, glucose and oxygen produce energy. 
and some is used for muscle contractions which create movement. The rest is converted into heat to warm the body and the glucose and oxygen also produce water which is carried away by the blood and excreted through the lungs, sweat and urine. The glucose and oxygen also produce carbon dioxide which is carried away by the blood and excreted through the lungs. So here's a summary table for you. Um, so let's look at the energy system, the phosphocreatine system. The fuel that's used is the creatine phosphate which is stored in the muscle. The rate of ATP production is very rapid. The capacity of the system is very limited because you've got limited amounts of creatine in the muscle. And its main use is for a very high intensity short duration activities lasting really should be six to ten seconds the lactic acid system the fuel used is glycogen which is stored in the muscle and liver the rate of ATP production is very rapid and the byproduct is lactic acid which can lead to muscular fatigue the capacity of the system is limited because you're using glycogen without the presence of oxygen and the main use is high intensity activities between 20 and 90 seconds. The aerobic system, you're using glycogen and fatty acids and it's stored as adipose tissue which is another word for body fat. The rate of ATP production is slow and the byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. The capacity of the energy system is unlimited because you're using it at low intensity and so you're looking at moderate and this should be to low intensity activities so moderate to low intensity activities long duration of three minutes plus so the higher the exercise intensity the more dependent you are upon glycogen the type of fuel that you use depends upon exercise duration intensity and type children have more mitochondria in their muscles and they are therefore more able to use oxygen more efficiently. They have high anaerobic thresholds, so as long as they are working at an appropriate intensity, they are able to keep going. But they have limited supplies of muscle and liver glycogen, smaller anaerobic fuel stores, and the capacity to use it, so they are not able to tolerate short bursts of energy of exercises that require high intensity and short reps. But this does improve with age. In terms of pregnancy, there is a gradual increase in energy expenditure as pregnancy arrives. Pregnant exercises use more carbohydrates than fats during moderate exercise. Therefore, blood sugar levels can fall very quickly. It should be noted that blood glucose can be reduced after strenuous exercise, especially in the latter stages of pregnancy. The ability of skeletal muscle to produce energy becomes less efficient with age. Levels of adenosine triphosphate and creatine phosphate decline with activity in older people. This means that they may be less able to gen regenerate adenosine triphosphate. Also, the enzymes responsible for energy release reduce in concentration and effectiveness. This can this can lead to reduced energy production.